Right, so um, I guess uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about um, my story, first of all. Um, I'm the Beauty and Style Director at Marie Claire, and I recently went back to work um, about two months ago, and um, Eliza's been absolutely fine. My, daughter's, uh, my daughter was uh, 13 months when I went back to work. She's been absolutely fine, and she's got a nanny, but I'm the one that's really suffered with separation anxiety. And um, I really think that probably if I was a little bit more prepared, um, I could have done a lot to make sure that um, I was a bit more organised. And I, I found like I wasn't, um, I wasn't expecting it um, to happen quite so, uh, so much really. But Grace, did you feel the same? So well, I've had it twice now because uh, my daughter started nursery when she was two and a half. So it's two and a half years ago, and. Um, I, yeah, I really wasn't expecting it. I was thinking, I'm going to have all this free time suddenly after two and a half years at home. It's going to be so exciting. I'm going to get lots of work done. And then that first morning, and the nursery leader said, off you go then. And I was like, well, where do I go? And she was like, just, you know, go and get a coffee or something. And I just sat in Starbucks and cried for about an hour, which is really embarrassing. And, um, and then, so the second time around, I was slightly more prepared, and I knew that I was going to find it really difficult, and she was going to go off kind of guns blazing. And... Um, so this time, yeah, I was a little bit more prepared. I still cried in Starbucks a lot, but um, I think I kind of had these little coping mechanisms in my head this time of the time that we would spend after school was so important to me to like get a little bit of her back, but also to let her just kind of process the day and unwind. So I didn't book in any activities or clubs or play dates. I just kept it the two of us, which I think actually she thought was quite boring, but it was really good for the both of us. And, um, and we've, we've come through, we've done a, a half term now, and, um, and it's, it's lovely because you do come back together and you have stories. She tells me all these things that I've you know, yeah. never learned myself at school. And in time, Eliza will do the same. But at the yeah. beginning, when they're babies, and I think you project your feelings of separation anxiety onto them inevitably, um, and you assume they must feel the same as you. And yeah, actually, exactly. it sounds like they're flying. Yeah. Have you experienced that whole thing with nursery at the moment? Yeah, when my daughter started nursery, the first day I just sat in the car outside, like, crying, and my husband was like, what's wrong with you? She's absolutely fine. And then she was fine for a couple of months, but then I think she realized that it wasn't something new and it wasn't a novelty or something that was going to continue happening. And then she kind of regressed and actually didn't really enjoy it. And that's what I found most difficult, having to mm. be really consistent and drop her off every morning despite her crying and saying that she didn't want to go. And, you know, like, it would have been easier just to give in and take her home, which I actually wanted to do, but... Yeah. I just felt like I had to be consistent and take her and it, it was a real struggle because when you're doing something and you can see that they're visibly upset, yeah. it's really, really hard. But as, as I think as a mom, as a parent, you do get that guilt because it was, you, know, you want to make it better and you want to say, okay, let's not go yeah. then. But you know the right thing to do is to take her and to drop her and to, yeah. to keep her routine going. It's so. definitely all about, I think it's about having a routine, which is actually really difficult for me at the beginning of going back to work and trying to find a routine. I've got three different people looking after Eliza during the week and it's in two different places as well. So it's really hard, but I think consistency, I think if it is a routine, the child can take some of that control as well, can't they? And they I can think routine is so important for really children. Is. And I really, really yeah. think that it's, it's sometimes, it's, I think it's probably one of the most important things like yeah. structure and routine, yeah. especially when they're younger. And I do think as well that when children do get upset, um, I think thinking of a positive way of looking at it is that at least you've formed a really amazing bond with them. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and, and that's a way of sort of looking at it so you don't feel so hard on yourself. But it's uh, I think as a mum, inevitably you're sort of like feeling so much guilt about so many different things and you're always second guessing whether you're doing the right thing and yeah. questioning yourself. And I think that we should like really try and stop giving ourselves such a hard time because yeah. it's hard enough without the added pressure of being so hard on ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Can I yeah. ask what you guys did in that moment? Because we've had those moments of at the drop off, suddenly the crying starts and you're like a rabbit in the headlights of you want to just immediately take them and then yeah. maybe the nursery leader wants you to get the hell out of As quickly really as quick. possible. Yeah. yeah. And it's so hard, isn't it? What do you do in that moment of meltdown? It's really hard because I still to this day don't get to say bye to her when I drop her. I literally have to like run out the door and I feel so guilty because I feel like I haven't hugged her, I haven't kissed her, I haven't said I know, goodbye properly yeah. and I feel like I'm kind of escaping and for yeah. me that's really, really hard because I kind of feel like guilty that I don't, 
But then if I do stick around, the longer I stay, the harder it gets. So I have learned that I've literally got to yeah. drop and run. Yeah, you've got to make it really swift. That's what I yeah. do as well. But I almost hand her over, say goodbye, and then shut the door and then listen. <laughs> And just to make sure that she's definitely okay and then I leave yeah but it's definitely best to make it prompt it's like ripping off a band-aid like the quicker the better You've got yeah to it exactly exactly so we always used to get the phone call as well from the nurse reader to say she's fine yeah yeah, yeah. And yes. absolutely, you know you don't understand that, that you get the drama and there's nothing afterwards that's a comfort in some way yeah the carer definitely has to distract them and get them into something yeah absolutely but um, I also thought about this actually and I thought it would be a really good idea and I haven't done this yet but to put photographs of Eliza's sort of loved ones all over the walls. I don't know if she can take them to nursery, I very much doubt it. <laughs> but um, just having photographs or even staying in touch on um, WhatsApp. So my nanny will send pictures of Eliza over to me and I'm like, oh look, she is great, she's having a lovely day but maybe I should be sending pictures back of me sitting at my desk or whatever I'm doing. Um, so that Eliza can see that I'm still around yes. and, you know... And I I'm, think that's a really nice do you idea. Do that? Um, basically, every time I collect her from nursery, she, like, runs over to me and it's, like, the nicest feeling in the world. So the only time I'm actually away from her is when she's at nursery. So yeah. I'm obviously not going to WhatsApp the teachers, but every yeah. time I've dropped her, I call, like, half an hour later to be like, did she settle okay? Is she fine? And, like, nine times out of ten, they were like, she's absolutely fine. Yeah. She's having a great time. Yeah. She's playing. So that always makes me feel a bit better. Yeah, that's good. And if they're a little bit sick as well, then that's sometimes they, they're a bit more needy, aren't they? So much more clingy. And yeah. Then, yeah. That makes it even worse. Yeah. <laughs> I've also thought recently um, when I was preparing for the back to school and I was terrified of the same feelings coming back, that somebody had done um, a little thing where they drew a heart on their oh. hand and their child's hand. And then it was kind of, if you are feeling anxious during the day to the child, you know, you can kiss the heart and we're connected and I'll oh, feel it and I'll know. That's so that's sweet. So cute. So, but yeah. I like, otherwise you just feel so, well, separated. And yeah. it's so hard to be able to communicate how you feel yeah. throughout the whole day. For so did um, you find it easier second time round or was it? I did, but also with school, they have to go. Whereas with nursery, nursery it's like not I compulsory. Yeah. Yes. So I, yeah, I definitely did. And also she's older, so she was able to articulate and say, I'm really excited, I'm really happy about this. This was really difficult, I didn't like this bit, you know. Yeah. Um, so we've definitely had a few moments at drop off where she's been a bit overwhelmed because there's so many big kids, it's not like nursery. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, I, I found it easier. She's definitely just straight in and it's been fine. Mm -hmm. it's and you, is, she, is she missing you as well, do you think, during the day at school? Or? <laughs> I think she is. Um, <laughs> I, th I think there are days where she comes back and she is physically all over me the whole time and I know then she just needs that kind of reconnection. But no, I think, I think it's a different age though. That I think that kind of um, independence has been instilled now. And, yeah, that's and because she good. sees so many other kids doing the same thing, yeah. she's kind of off, yeah, she's off in the world now, really, at five. I think the other important thing actually as well is, well, for Eliza now, she's only 15 months now and um, I think it's really important for me to sort of say it's okay to miss mummy or daddy or you know and just and and just say that if you do miss me and you get upset then you know Helena will give you a hug her nanny and you know it's like, I miss you too and you know it's important to sort of relate that to them isn't it I guess about missing I each do other. say a lot I really missed you today she's yeah. like <laughs> we watch this is so so like a window into how pathetic I've become we watched Mamma Mia and there's a song um, that uh, the mum is singing to the daughter on the morning of her wedding and it's, it's like slipping through my fingers and it's, it's about like imagining her when she was little going off to school and every time that song comes on I burst into tears and my daughter's like, you're crying out loud, like pull yourself together now, this is getting ridiculous. So she sometimes will come home and sing just slipping through my fingers and I'm like, oh, oh terrible. Funny. So she gets it, she's manipulating it and it's, it's working brilliantly. <laughs> Um, I think the other thing actually for me that's really important to mention is that because I was so disorganised when I went back to work, um, I'd already booked my nanny, um, but uh, I wasn't expecting that quick shock of going back to work five days a week. So I think it, if uh, I was to give any advice, um, it would be definitely to go back to work gradually. So maybe go back for one day a week or two days a week if you can. And I think work's quite flexible. The, the employer should be quite flexible um, with that type of situation. And uh, also, um, 
going away, I've been sort of um, uh, gradually sort of leaving Eliza for longer and longer times, but soon it's going to, going to come to the point where I'm going to have to go away with work overnight, and that's going to be very difficult. Um, but I went to LA last night, uh, last week, sorry, last night, to do a shoot, and I took Eliza with me. And um, so I think my, my job is very flexible, and they let me take Eliza away, which is fantastic. But um, it will get to the stage soon where I, I won't be able to take her away. So do you, do you travel without Eliza? No, I've never left her. Um, I, whenever I travel for work, yeah. I always bring her with me. I've actually never left her. I'm still like breastfeeding her, so yes. <laughs> I can't like really leave her for very long. Yeah. So, especially like overnight. So yeah. I don't even know. I can't even think about it right now. And are you finding it quite easy to take her along with you? The older she gets, the more you need to bring things to keep her occupied and it's becoming a challenge. Yeah. The younger she was, it was very, very easy. Yeah. Uh, but now she doesn't nap in the day, so it's like constantly keeping her occupied and bringing yeah. lots of things to keep her entertained and busy. But she is actually really well behaved, because I think I've always brought her with me from such a young age. Yeah. So she's used to adults and she's yeah. used to kind of, she's just like very sociable and she's like happy in any situation. So I'm really lucky that I can bring her and I can travel easily with her. Um, so yeah, I guess that's a bonus. I think it's nice to take your babies abroad as well, don't you think, and just go on an adventure with them. I think it's so important. I think there's so many things that they learn, they probably won't learn in the classroom. No, they exactly. learn through travel, meeting people, experiences, different situations. I really, really believe that like most, like the most important lessons in life are probably just you know, learn at nursery. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, went, I went on a trip for work when, I think Emmy was about, three and a bit, maybe nearly four, and, um, and that was my first night away, and, uh, and I was in New York, and it was something about being in a completely other country. It was like the time change. It's such a, yeah, exactly, completely, um, and that was, like, that's probably the worst approach of anxiety I've ever had, so I think to build up gradually, it's such a good idea, yeah. um, and also to have things in place for them as a distraction from the word go, so my husband was well versed and ready in the routine and everything, but to have like extra things and extra treats so she would associate it with like a nice experience. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the emotions, you know, you can't, you can't control theirs, you can't micromanage their experience, but also your own. I mean, it's just innate, isn't it? And there's nothing I don't think you can do to temper it. No. It's just pain. It's just pain and guilt all the time. <laughs> Do you really want to take any questions from the floor today? Yeah, I was just going to say actually as well that I did, um, I actually, when I went back to work, I actually did really suffer from quite bad anxiety. And it got to the stage where, because it was so sort of right, now I'm doing five days a week away from home. So I actually lived in Gloucestershire as well, um, which was a big mistake, <laughs> really looking back for a whole year. I lived in Gloucestershire with my baby and then I moved back to London for the week. So. Um, it was a massive change and I actually did suffer really badly from, from sort of feeling very panicky and I had really bad anxiety and I sort of, this was only about a month ago and I took a step back and I thought I've got to do something about this because it's not good for my health, it's probably, Eliza's probably feeling that anxiety as well and, um, and I really try, try to manage my anxiety and just for anybody that suffers from anxiety it's, it is crippling. Um, and so I um, stopped sugar, I stopped eating sugar, I stopped drinking alcohol, I stopped drinking that glass of wine in the evening. Um, I also started taking my um, vitamins and having that routine for myself every morning. So I took my um, ashwagandha, I took omega-3 oils, um, I take a green powder as well every single morning. Um, and I also exercised, so I got outside again and I was sort of, you know, being, going for that 10 minute jog in the morning really sort of helps with anxiety as well. And, um, and also doing a bit of yoga and I've got a, a really good yoga app which is called uh, Asana Rebel. I don't know if anybody's heard of that, but it's a brilliant app. So I just l literally put that on for 10 minutes every morning and do that. And also I've learned to have sort of breathing um, using breathing techniques as well sort of throughout the day but I think that that anxiety was really bad actually when I went back to work and it's sort of leveled out now and I'm really pleased that I've sort of got it under control um, so it's definitely worth having all of this sort of um, being, being prepared for yourself as well not just about childcare and everything but 
it is definitely worth sort of thinking about yourself. And I think it's really hard as a mum to realise that you have to think about yourself as yeah, well. Yeah, it really is. And you often put like your own feelings and everything you need on the back burner. And I think there comes a time where you have to think actually, like for the good of your child, you also have to yeah. think about yourself because they really pick up on how you're feeling. Yeah, absolutely.